students in this video we are going to talk about functions and all these functions are the ones that are going to be coming out for your tests and your exams so basically we are talking through about six straightforward functions the other function i will go into more detail with that's if and concatenate but for now the first function we are going to look at is a total function. So if you want to total a column, it's quite simple. With all your functions, they're basically made up of three parts. Your functions perform the same things as your mathematical operators, only they are designed to perform specific functions. So if I go with my first function, let's say I want to total this column over here. I start off every single function with my equal to sign. Once I have my equal to sign, I put in the name of my function. The function to total is known as your sum function. So I've got equal to sum, open brackets, and I've got my range of information. Now the range of information is the information that I actually want to total. So I want to, call, to total from the first cell here, which is C5, to the last cell, which is C11. So I'm not including the cell that I am currently in, which is C12. I'm just basically concentrating on the first one all the way through to the last value. So that includes the entire column. So that is known as your range. So it's made up of your equal to sign, the name of the function, and of course, the range. Once you press enter, you get your total. Just like formulas, if I click on my answer over here, I can see in my formula bar, it's equal to sum and my range. If I go to my bottom right hand corner, I notice I see my autofill button, which is my black cross. If I drag it across these two columns, it's going to total the second column. It's also going to total my third column as well. Another way to actually total a column without actually typing out the function is to use the auto sum button. One way to do this is if you highlight your column and on your extreme right hand side of your home tab, you'll see an auto sum button. If you click on the drop down, it gives you all your, av your, all your recently used functions. In this case, we want to sum, so we click on the sum button. And if I click on my answer, it already has the function for me. So that's just basically a shortcut. If I want to use my average function, so to work out the average of, say, this column over here, I go equal to, I'll type the name of the function, and I'll put in the range of information I want the average of which is again C5 to C11. So I want the average for test one. So it gives me the answer right over there. I can go to my autofill button and drag it across because I wanted to work it out for test two. And of course, the class mark. If I want to find the highest mark in this range, I would use my max function. To use max, I go equal to max, open brackets, and select that same range, which is C5 to C11. And the highest value, as we can see, is 75. So 75 should show in that cell. And again, I can drag it across. Minimum is your lowest value in your range. So I go equal to min. Basically, it's the same process. Equal to min, select the range. 
and you would get your lowest mark, which is 30, and drag it across for the lowest mark in this column, and drag it across for the lowest mark in your class mark column. Okay, count actually counts the number of cells that have values, okay? So what this means is basically, if I choose this range over here, whoops, if I choose the range, it's going to basically count every cell that has numbers. So we know that every single cell over here does have numbers because we can basically count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of these cells have numbers. Okay? If I deleted any of the numbers from here, so I click on this 49 and I delete it, it's going to say six. Why? Because there are now six numbers in this range. So your count counts numeric values. Count A counts numbers and alphabets. So basically, if I click on count again, and I change the range to include C4, which has test one, the word test one. So if I go C4, still going to give me seven. Why? Because it's only counting the numbers. It's not counting the numbers and the letters. If I go over here and I type count A and I make my range C4 to C11, it's going to count both my numbers and letters. So now it's going to give me eight. So basically that is how my count function works and count A. So that's the differences between them. Count only counts numeric values in a range. It doesn't count blank rows or text. Count A counts numbers and alphabets and doesn't count blank rows. So those are basically our straightforward functions. Okay, made up basically of your equal to sign, the name of the function, and of course, the range. So those are straightforward, and the reason I say they're straightforward is because they only made up of three parts, okay? The next function that we are going to talk about is the one called the if statement. Now, let's say we want a situation that shows us if somebody passes, they need to get over 50%. If not, we want fail to be displayed in the cell. So for that, you would use an if statement. And normally it's easier to write out or type out your if statement before you actually um, implement it, just so that you know exactly what you're trying to do. So your if statement is also made up of three parts. So I can go equal to if, and I choose my cell. So this is my condition. So you'll notice if you put your mouse pointer above it, it says logical test, value if true, and value if false. Your logical test means this is the condition that you're putting in, okay? So your condition could be anything that basically is going to give us the result that we want. So one way to do this, or at least the easiest way to do this, is you can basically go if E5 is less than 50, you want it to be a fail. But I cannot just write fail or type fail just like that. And the reason for that is it's a text value. If something is text, I need to put in inverted commas. If it was a numeric value or a cell reference, 
then I don't need to put in my inverted commas. But it is text, so I put in the word fail. If not, we want it to say pass. If I don't have these inverted commas, it's going to give me an error. Okay? So, I can go to my bottom corner and drag it all the way down. And it will give me my series of correct answers. That is how my if statement works. We will do a lot of examples of this in class so we can see the different ways that it works. But for now, know that your if statement is made up of three different parts. Your condition, your value if the condition is true, and the value if your condition is false. But think of it in terms of commas. After the first comma, it has your condition if the value is true. That's after the first comma. After your second comma, it's what's going to appear in your cell if your value is false. So it is relatively simple once you get the hang of it. The last formula that you have to really know in terms of your test is one that is called concatenate. Okay? So basically, if I look at cell A and cell B, it's got names and it's got surnames. So I got first name in column B and, well, surname in column A. I want to bring both of these into one cell. To do this, I use concatenate. How I do this, I put in my equal to sign. I type concatenate. I click on my first cell, which is B5, because I want name and then surname to appear. So B5, comma. I could go B5, comma, and I could click on A5. And it's going to put both the name and the surname in one cell. However, I don't like the way it's formatted. Why? I don't have a space between the two. So to put a space between the two, after B5, and after I put the first comma, I'm going to put in inverted commas, leave a space, put inverted commas, and put this comma here. This inverted commas with a space represents a space in Excel. So it's going to leave a space between name and surname, which it very nicely does. You can take a look at the formula or function bar to see how that function is typed out. And then we drag it all the way down, and it gives me my name and surname of all my students. So basically, these are the functions that you will be tested on. Okay, remember to, um, wherever you have a total, you do use your sum function. Make sure you do know how to use all these functions because they will come out in your tests and your exams. Thank you.